Hello viewers, welcome to your this week welcome to our this week's edition of your popular program, Political View. Reaching you live from our studio here in London, Heritage Television. In this week's episode, I'm having two prominent uh, Nigerians. My guests are Mystic Marlin, a, an entertainer and broadcaster. Welcome, Mystic Marlin. How are you today? I am fine, thank you. I hope you are not being affected with the traffic. No, it wasn't. It was you are welcome. Here. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Femi okay, is the DG of Nigerian Institute here in London. She uh, is here as well. How are you, Mr. Okay? Very fine, thank you. Thank you very much for your support. Viewers, we are going to go straight into today's edition of our program. Virtually every Nigerian knows that there is an important event this week, this Saturday to be precise, that is when we are having presidential election and people have been counting down. Tensions are rising, series of uh, allegation, counter allegation, accusation as well, and counter accusation. I will start from Mystic Marlin. What did you see to the preparation of the election from the INEC point of view, the Electoral Ember? Well, well, the INEC usually are prepared. But the citizens and the politicians, I call them politicians, the people contest, and are they prepared? That's the thing. Nigeria has come a long way. And the PVCs, most people said, a friend of mine sent me a message yesterday. She came back because she couldn't get her PVCs to be able to vote. The PVC is now like selling hot cake. Hmm. And you, like you know, there's a lot happening in the eastern part of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. News about the boycotts or whatever, not to, not to vote and all that. Those are issues I believe probably when you, when you raise the topics we'll discuss. But I think INEC will tell us they're prepared more than ever. But personally, I don't think so. INEC has, I mean, in their announcement, they've announced that they are, uh, they are prepared, yes. well prepared, all arrangements have been put in place, yes. and um, the security arrangement is well in place as well, because according to a report from INEC, they are working hand in hand in collaboration with all the security agencies, mm -hmm. and we strongly believe that the security agencies, as well as the Nigerian police, uh, they are ready. And most of the new, I mean, some states they have new police commissioners, With and the they will believe the security. I uh, mean, the security. I mean, the Nigerian police said they are, they are they are in control of the security situation. When it comes to the securities and elections in Nigeria, they are never ready. I must say that. Let's imagine what happened in them. Is it on the state or on good state recently? That's in Ugun State, Ugun State. Uh, the presidential campaign. And then, the gov not presidential campaign, the gubernatorial campaign, isn't it? It's combined. I mean, it's, it's campaign. Combined, it's, yeah, it's APC where campaign. Where the president, the president of the nation, went to a state, and you saw what happened. That shows the security are not prepared at all. And it's the same thing that happened almost in uh, Imo State. And you, can you imagine what will happen in Anambra State? So I don't think, when they come out to say they're prepared and the security is taken care of, I don't think so. So with some of the event that's unfolding, yes. you believe that um, they are not well prepared, they're the security never. measure is not well in place? Previously and now they're never prepared. Mr. Femi, okay, what's your view? Well, uh, security is always a challenge in Nigeria. For a fact, we're already um, under-policed. Uh, that's a well-known fact. But what's happened is um, it's not just the police that will be involved in the elections. There are other security agencies uh, that will be involved, like the, um, the immigration and the... No, state security services. State security services, even the... Um, the DSS. And the, and th there's another one, the, um, they wear blue uniform. I can't remember what they're called now. Uh, civil defense. Civil defense. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So they are also involved, and of course you've got the army as a backup, and other uh, military agencies. Uh, as for INEC, to be quite frank, uh, I think that um, this time around, um, INEC has uh, has gone 
overboard, really, to try and allow the electors to get access to their PVCs. Uh, in previous elections, the cut-off point for collecting PVCs was quite far distance to the actual election. But you know that the elections are on Saturday, and the cut-off point was just on Monday. So they've given everyone ample opportunity to try and get those PVCs. But as you know, we're still waiting for INEC to release those figures as to how many people have actually collected their PVCs. We know there's 84 million people registered. That's uh, the official figure. But um, I say, I, I, I believe that of that figure, there was about 7 million that haven't been collected. I don't know what the state of players will be now, but that's quite a huge, that's almost like 10 or 15 percent 10 percent, well, short of 10 percent of the number that hasn't been collected. So um, my concern is, uh, as um, Mystique said, um, these um, attacks on INEC offices is really disturbing. Well, Abia, Especially Abia, happening in Abia, yes, happening in Plateau, happening in a number of states. So the question to ask, really, in those situations is, who is it that's going to benefit from those bombings? I mean, who, to whose interest is it for there to be a problem with voting in a place like Abia and a place like Plateau and a place like Anambra, you would want to think that those places are going to be uh, quite sensitive in terms of the outcomes of those elections. They may be very close because a lot of people are thinking that the middle belt with Plateau and Benrin, uh, you know, the, the, the ruling party may lose some seat or some votes there. So there could be some issue there as to why they're bombing INEC there. Again, in a number of states, I would say there's, there, it's out there that the governor is actively campaigning for uh, APC. So there could be the situation that people are not wanting that to happen. So that could be a factor. Abia state as well, there's issues there between the existing PDP and the APC who's got a strong candidate that used to be in PDP. So them bombing up and trying to affect the votes there is another sign. And this is, to be honest with you, this is the problem with our politics. The politics is not our people. It is the politicians that, that sponsor these kind of actions. I mean, of course, we don't have any evidence to say that they're sponsored. I mean, they could well be accidents. But the thing is, it's quite a coincidence that they're all happening at the last hour, the 11th hour, one after the other. I mean, if this is the last of it, then, of course, that's going to be great. But if it continues after this and it becomes systematic, a pattern then begins to be uh, uh, appearing. Thank you, Mr. Okay, let me cut you in there. Mr. Uh, Malin, I know you are a peace-loving person. And we do believe that this presidential, I mean, this um, election, mm. among all the measures that the um, stakeholders have taken, mm. is to ensure peaceful and fair election. Unlike today in the future, a peace pact has been signed yes. by political parties. Mm. Among the leading one, the gladiators, their name were mentioned. Yes. The former U.S. president. Bill Clinton supposed to be in Nigeria today to be there. There was a reason given from um, his spokes. I mean, um, the person yes. where they said um, he doesn't want his uh, visit to be politicized. Yes. So he like to be neutral. He does. We believe that within the two parties, mm -hmm. there are things. This is that it's possible for them to mm -hmm. to paint some color, which is yes. not precisely what is on the ground. Mm -hmm. So the peace accord. In your own view, do you think it's going to address the issue of the instability, the security well, the, the, uh, measures that have been put in place to ensure that the free and fair election is being held? When you talk peace in a nation, it should be everybody, not a particular party, not say PDP or APC. Those are not the only two parties in Nigeria. And when you're talking about the peace of a nation, I'm not bringing, I don't want to bring a part that probably should have been mentioned. We shouldn't forget the IPOB. We shouldn't forget the, uh, the Boko Haram that was in the north. Niger Delta. And then the Niger Delta. So all this has to be in place before you talk peace in an election. And IPOB calling for boycotts, and some parts of the some that Igbos that don't believe in that, 
wants to go and vote. How can you talk peace when the security is not together? I was telling, when I was discussing with Femi earlier on, I told him personally, I would love to vote. I would want my people to go and vote. But with the threats I'm getting from the yeah, Afrans, I will call my people and tell them, please, whether you be alive, at least your lives for Nigerian politics. If the peace will work, there is no problems. But right from the beginning, we've had this problem of peace that has not been solved to now. So why is it this during election we will solve? Well, I don't want to really, I feel it has a lot to say about that, but, yeah, you know, I, I that's where my, my take on peace, mm -hmm. we're not ready for it yet. Thank you very much, Pali. Uh, Femi, I want you to look at that aspect of uh, the peace accord that I, that I mentioned earlier that has been signed today. And um, in your discussion, you do mention that um, most of this problem that Positions we are behind it, Absolutely. and I remember on this platform as well recently, one of my guests do mention that uh, the politicians are not the real perpetrators. That in this act, it's like the collab, the collab, the, 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 the main actors are. I mean, that the the electorate, that is the civilian too, yeah. are also yes. part of the problem. I mentioned whereby, okay, we will come to that later. Please, I want you to well, look at that aspect of this peace if we are to really get the peace that we really needed at this yeah. moment. Yeah, I do recollect um, the presidential aspirant of um, or his spokesman or whatever saying that uh, PDP might uh, withdraw Which from. Which that? For PDP, one okay. of the spokesmen said that they would, might withdraw from the peace pact. Uh, following uh, the comment that was made by El Rufai when he was referring to um, the interference. But it was reported today that uh, the presidential flag bearer of uh, PDP, Alahaji Atiku Abubakar, was at the venue. Well, fantastic. Uh, was the president there as well? Absolutely. The president so, was there. So, no. so that's fantastic. So that is what I wanted to say was that if the two of them were there, then the aesthetics of it is very important. Because the same thing happened in 2015, where you had President Buhari and Jonathan also signing a peace pact. That will send a message to those down the line, we hope, that it's not necessary to put your life on the line. Uh, for like the what Nigerians. Yes. And, and the other thing that I like <coughs> about what the President has done as well, is that despite the infighting within his party, he said to everyone out there that, look, it is your right to vote for whomsoever you want to do so and go out there and do so. That's another signal to, to people to say that, look, if your president is telling you to vote on your conscience, then why should anyone then try to force anyone or to stop anybody else from voting their conscience? It's now down to the security operatives to do the needful and ensure that people's right to vote uh, takes place. Uh, there are many that say that, for example, the resurgence or the reenactment of Operation Python Dance was not a positive thing. <clears throat> but when you've got a prescribed author, also, um, organization, which is iPod, they've been prescribed, and they're trying to tell people not to vote, and there's the possibility that they may be intimidating people not to vote, then you might understand the need for Operation Python Dance as maybe it's not palatable per se. But if an organization is trying to deprive a, a sizable population from voting, uh, that could scupper the results, that could create a problem. Because how would you v validify an election if a significant population are not able to vote? So it is down to the security operatives to make it possible for people to vote. You know? Sorry, Sorry before you you are, you Fali, that is the point I want you to ask. Yes. You see, yes. you are very yes. frequent. You, yeah. you are, I mean, a frequent traveler to Nigeria, yes. Nigeria, and yeah. to some part of, uh, I mean, country yeah. as well. Do you think that some of those who are calling for the point of election in this part, uh, on that part of Nigeria, do you think it's going to hold? 
or do you think people will believe them today? Well, first off, let me take you back to the Panton dance. As far as I am concerned, that was the wrongest move ever by a government. Regardless what, there were about at least 19 or 20 per se uh, uh, dances that were put up. I use the word dances that were put up that time. And only three were carried out. And those three were carried out in the eastern part of Nigeria. To me, it's questionable. But then, let's not go into the Panton dance. Because even after all that was said, I'm sorry to say, I don't believe in the ideologies of the IPOVs. But I am. My people were killed. Unlawfully killed. Nothing has been said about it. All we do, no, all we do is go there and justify what they did. No, no, no. I think to no. me, it wasn't good enough. Look. But, let me just play the point. But, telling, talking about Panton dance or bycotting the election, they have their points. Like I said, I don't believe in that ideology. But they have their points. And then, if, like, say, some of your people were killed at that, part, that particular period, and now you still want to go and vote for, because they're not actually... To me, the way I understand it, it's not a Nigerian thing now, and it's not a Biafra thing now. It's just, this governor was there when he came and killed my people. Yes, it was a PDP governor. So it's not even, Abia is not PDP per se right now. It's both PDP, but it was a PDP governor that was there then. So by cutting this has nothing to do with this particular, it's just that they did it to the um, Anambra. Whether it worked or not, I don't know. Who yeah, came victory? victory, I don't know. But right now, I think some people are scared. I am scared too for my people to go out there to vote. So it might work. We do. Okay. Yes, okay. it might work. Okay. I will pray for a beautiful election, that part of it where our threat has been issued. Now, Mr. Okay, I want you to quickly look at this area because I'm bringing this question from your earlier statements, like where you mentioned, you, point, uh, you pointed and accused like, fingers to the politicians and many people struck, many people believe that the 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 the, the, the Nigerian people do the electorate to uh, to blame for some of these acts. We are I want to look at the area of both blind. Who are we to blame in this drug Okay. See to me I call the boat Brian situation a myth it's it's blown up beyond reasonable proportions for example uh, you have a situation as i say where you have 84 million voters let's assume that 54 million people vote is it physically possible for them to go to 50 or 4 million people and buy their votes this is just not realistic the quantum of cash that needs to be taken out, physical cash to be given out a number of people, there are 119,973 separate polling booths. Each one of them has 500 people. The, the actual machinery to do vote buying that's going to be effective is impossible. And with all the eyes of EFCC, CBN, and the, all the other agencies on them now, more glaringly than ever before, and you will notice also, for a fact, that this election period has been the most lackluster election period ever. In previous elections, money was being sprayed everywhere, to the media houses, to all these organizations, going to the presidency, creating support groups and whatnot, all getting uh, Ghana must go bags and all the like. That's not happening anymore. In fact, the parties are finding it hard to even do their campaigns. You go to some places, you hardly see um, posters and banners and so on, because there's a clampdown on reckless spending and looted money. So that's a good thing, the TSA and so on and so forth. That's a good thing for our elections. I think that's going to have a big impact on the vote buying. And of course, INEC as well has made it such, they've changed their regulations such that you can't take your phone into the bowling booth anymore. 
you can have your phone at the at the, at the um, actual polling area, but when you go to vote, you're not allowed to take your phone. So you, in in the other Osho, Osho and Ikiti, apparently there was the, the allegation that people were taking pictures of to prove that I voted for this. It's not going to happen this time. So. Obviously, they're making efforts to reduce the possibility of it, but that's not to say that there may not be some vote fine that may well do happen. How effective it's going to be, only God knows. But we want to implore Nainek and the security forces to try and stop that as much as possible. Ms. Uh, Ms. Manning, I want you to look at the aspect of this. Vote buying, giving money out to voters by politicians. Recently, I was uh, discussing with some colleague when we were having a tutorial meeting, and one of my colleagues mentioned, he said, not any measure that, he, that, that the security agencies and the INA could put in place that could prevent the, the, the sensitive issue of it. Money, money sharing. That is, put that is a bit, uh, buying. Yes. in your view. What do you think is going to happen? The person is affecting this Saturday. The person is absolutely right. It is a Nigerian thing. Nigerian politics is a money politics, whether we like it or not. Whether INEC does whatever, puts the whole uh, gadgets to stop money exchange. It happens from the top and it continues to happen. There is no stopping that from money exchange. If you don't do it in the public, you do it behind the scenes. So I don't think it will have any effect. Will it continue? Yes, it will continue. Okay, now looking at the aspect of uh, if it will continue, who are the people benefiting? Is it the politician or of course the the, the, the Nigerian populace? I no, want you to look the at the aspect it's the because politician is giving money out yes, yes. and they are taking. Yes. No. So who do you think it's is benefiting? Like are they not the people who are collecting? Are they not the people no. be, 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 be the people, benefiting? No, the people collecting are not because when the politicians give you ten pounds to go and vote, give them naira in Nigeria. Yes, naira. the naira. Yes, they give you five thousand naira. Oh, that's a massive. Amount. By the time they get in there, in less than a year, they made their money back, and they've forgotten you. So they're the people benefiting. It's obvious, I, you, like, this advert don't sell your uh, birthright. That's what it is. When you take that money from them, you've given them four years of your life. Because uh, as, as it's coming to you, you've, how, how much highest can they give you? 10,000 naira. I tend to agree with you. Okay, look at that aspect. Do you, do, do you agree with that? Then. Do you think that the government had made provision to prevent this vote buying? So they said, they said every um, aspect has been taken yeah, care of uh, and it didn't happen. Yeah, I've highlighted some issues that will reduce the incidence of vote buying. And the, only, the government and I can only try to put in measures to reduce it. To eradicate it is another matter. But the other thing to also, see, we talk about who benefits. Of course, people talk about stomach and infrastructure and all this kind of stuff. So maybe they will have rice for one week or two weeks or whatever. Uh, they can buy a bag of rice. But the, other, the thing is that the way it is now is that even if I collect that money, there's no guarantee for the um, politician that that particular person is going to vote a particular way. And even now, they can't see to confirm which way they're voting. So that's a good thing. So you, uh, people are now saying, collect the money and vote your conscience. So now that's also a dissentive to a, a, a possible politician because he, he's not going to be able to guarantee that that money he's given is going to result in a particular way. So we have to wait and see. So um, at the end of the day, as she said, as Mystique said, vote money um, politics is a big thing in our community. Sometimes they don't have to give it to the individuals. They got to give it to the um, the the, the um, opinion makers. Is it representative of the people? In the, yes. Yeah. So there's so many ways around it. And also, they might not even be giving it to the people. They might be buying the party agents, buying the INEC officials, buying the policemen. So they might not even give it to the voter. The voter might not be even getting the money at the end of the day. But from your own opinion, what do you think was stop this uh, incident? The, 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 the only thing. 
realise that they should do a good game. Do a game of genuinity and let the winner, the best candidate win. It's not um, a do or die affair. Lead, I must win by all means. You see, and also, tightening up our systems to stop corruption will also help. Because as uh, Mystique said, the aim is I spend all that money, I have to recoup that money. So if they now know that they can't even recoup that money, then there might be a incentive for them to even spend that money out in the first place. Because when I spend all that money and I get into government, I can't even get at the coffers, there's going to be no point in spending that money, isn't it? So these are the things we need to tighten up all these um, loopholes and of, of, uh, things that are enabling politicians to steal. And that's why I'm in favour of the APC candidate, President Mohamed Buhari. Because of the two candidates, I will say he's more... Mm -hmm. I don't want you to go into that area. Look at his personality. Don't mention about the parties. Let it's us my try personal to see opinion. As many. Yeah, it's my your personal opinion. opinion. Let us try as much as yes, we will to maintain I, I, our yes. independence. Yes. I agree with your views. I am independent. Yeah, yeah. Now, Mr. Bailey, I want you to look at the election, the proper election on Saturday, that this week Saturday. A series of campaign has been going on. Food, other parties, there are some big fish that are swallowing the others that we couldn't be able to even know that some parties are in existence because the list is endless and series of style has brought into this election. In fact, people are saying they enjoy the fun because it's that the fun goes on. Looking at the strategy of the election, the campaign, you can mention any state as you like. Look at it. I want you to compare it with the advanced country. You are previous, you had the experience of both of London, I mean United Kingdom and United States of America from your experience in this I mean in countries. Compare it with what we have on the ground in Nigeria. What do you think? Do you think our preparation and our style is viable? Well, Nigerian politics have always called it the politics of fun. In fun. That, fun, yes, in that it's foul play, it's not, it's not the real politics, you know, where you have to, there's the amount of killing during an election, you don't get it all other places, the amount of turning down other politicians to gain what you want is worse than you've done all over other parts of the country, but then the crowds, like, I use, for instance, PD, you say we shouldn't mention blah, 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 but PDP, let's say, can won the presidential election for APC last year, than 2015, last month. But this time around, what's going on in Cali? It's now making me think, okay, maybe Nigeria is changing a little bit. Because now, the opposition party, PDP now, pulled more crowd than expected. You know, so when it comes to the politics of Nigeria, I can't just determine the ones internationally. I love Nigerian politics, I must say. <laughs> Whether, yes, there's so much going on that is not right, but I am proud to be a Nigerian and I'm proud the way it's going. Maybe one day we'll play the real politics, but right now we're just playing the Nigerian, I use the word Nigerian politics. Let me go draw your attention to the issue of the pooling crowd. Yes. <laughs> Does the pooling of crowd determine the result of the poll? It's a, a, it's a, a letter by numbers. Mm -hmm. So it's the number of crowd you pull that will determine if you're The turning out of the people. Yes. Don't you think that maybe some of um, those who came are... Uh, what? No, it's not about what, but maybe they are uh, onlookers. Maybe they are at the stadium to know what is really happening, want to look at the style of the campaign. Don't you think so? Or do you think that virtually everybody that converged at that stadium is a party loyalist? No, not everybody that, that is party loyalist, but the, the amount of the, the, if you check the difference, you will know who are party loyalists. You should know. So if you're used to uh, having uh, maybe 10,000 people come out, and you have 100,000 people come out, at least, at least 80%. We, 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 are, we, are, we, are, we are at the peak of uh, our discussion, but from the commercial department, they have been getting a message that, let's go to the commercial department for the for their advert, because that is exactly what is sustaining the situation. When we come back, we will continue precisely where we stopped. So we are going to commercial, we are having our commercial break.
Welcome back. Before we go on uh, commercial break, we are looking at the situation of um, Nigerian election and also the secret behind the money change hands between politician and um, the electorate. Mr. Okay, what do you think that could stop this issue? Well, I mean. I don't really see much that we that's going to stop um, the vote buying and stuff. We've talked about that. But um, what was interesting was um, how um, the state talked about, um, you talked about the fun of elections and how things are different this time around. Uh, and things are different this time around. And what are the differences with the fact that there's two northern candidates vying for the position? So that's, going to, that's brought something different into the mix. Because normally, uh, in these and elections, the two leading political two parties, leading, two leading candidates. That because the presidential is, aspirant is caught across yes, all yes. part of the federation. I mean, look, we have a situation where we have ninety something parties. This is a joke, and seventy four going for elections, such that people are going to have this big long <laughs> polling paper, ballot paper, which you know they have to roll up and stuff like that. So it's going to be quite confusing for the electorate. They have to do things that they haven't done before. There's a possibility that their finger print could be smudged onto the other page, although they're saying they're using quick drying ink now and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, and also the space between the parties is so much smaller now. So if you've got big fingers like mine, that might be a problem. So these are lots of issues that uh, they're going to encounter. But going about the elections and the campaigning, look, uh, we shouldn't think that over in the West that uh, they, 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 they're doing great things and we, we are the ones doing nonsense. Because if you look at the shenanigans that goes on over here and in America, where they gerrymander the, um, uh, the, the, the polling areas to fix it to a particular party, so when, you know, every so often they change the boundaries for voting, so they do that specifically to favor their particular party. That happens here. So even people have been uh, caught up in sort of um, ballot fixing whereby they get polls in the post, what they call um, um, post 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 and they stuff and they fill in it and that happens here as well. So no country, and also you had a situation where um, the machines, the so-called electronic votions are not working. So there's so many issues all around the world in terms of elections, it's never perfect anywhere. So we shouldn't think that it's perfect. And you know all the pe all those when they were shouting, the president should have enacted the electoral law. He should have elected the electoral law. We should have electronic voting. I, I just believe Nigeria. We still haven't got to grips with the electronic card, um, PVC card, card reader. Let alone start talking about electronic voting. And in a country where power is just comical, there's hardly any power. You want to have electronic voting? It's going to really work. 
so, and also it's subject to manipulation. You still need to have paper backup. So at the end of the day, it will take some time before the nation has electronic voting. Uh, and uh, as for the Electoral Act, you know, those that say, no, the president should have signed it, shouldn't have signed it, he may have ulterior motives or whatever. Uh, for me, I, I stand by the president's decision. Uh, it is a president's prerogative whether he signs any bill that comes to his table. Those who, the legislators who made that law, if they want to veto him, they have the power. To veto, to him, veto as well. him as well. So if they didn't put together, if they were serious about it, they would have put together sufficient numbers to veto him. So if they don't have the power, then we need to move on to the reality and carry on with the law, which came into effect with when um, Jonathan signed it in March 2015. So the new law that we have now was the new one that Jonathan signed in, not the one even that was being used during the time of Buhari. So we're actually using a new one right now. So at the end of the day, if that electoral act would have come into force if they had said it will come in, uh, they had said it will be enacted for all elections after 2019. Mr. Bali, Mr. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, okay, Mr. Bali, I want us to look at the area of what many there is a lot of argument in many quarters that the diaspora vote. People believe that diaspora vote could play significant, in, I mean, significant. important in the um, yeah. Nigerian election. Mm -hmm. So, do you think that um, we are not accusing anybody now? But we believe that uh, our legislators could have actually looked into it because it is their own main duty to enact law. I mean, Putting aside that diaspora vote without not paying attention to it, what do you think that the diaspora vote could can it change the voting pattern? Can it go to a direction? Well, of course it can because um, in the um, diaspora, I think we actually see more than most of the people that are in Nigeria. Yeah, awareness, awareness, yes, the awareness, but the awareness, political awareness, yes, yes. and. Um, that word, the diaspora vote don't count. It's been, we've been campaigning. I'm one of the people that's been campaigning, yeah, for it to, to start, for them to start counting us as Nigerians. Because if you cannot vote wherever you are, you know, in France they do it, I think. So it's, even it's, Ghanians. Even Ghanians do it now. So why can't we vote from here, wherever we are? And especially in Europe and in America, there's a lot, a lot of Nigerians there that can actually contribute. So what, the only way we do it now is call our people back home and tell them where to go and vote. That's the only way we, and we're still, still making impact like that. So that they should look into it. I spoke to one of the senators recently in my interview, and he said, "Okay, we're looking into it." And uh, what's her name came in. The, the lady, Dabri, yeah, she came in with mm, Abike, yes, that they're still, every, how many years they're still looking into it. It's about time to make it right. Um, um, so there we go. Let's, I want you to look at, the, we are, we, I, want you, I want your own contribution towards this electro, I mean diaspora yeah, vote. I, I'd like to. And from that, from our own point of view, she had actually addressed it. To, I mean, which I quite, I mean, really happy about it. So, but do you think that the elect, I mean, the, 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 the diaspora vote, will count. it will count, okay. or any impact? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, I call our legislators legislators. They're only interested in the money that's going to come to them, and they're not interested in the people. Uh, so they what you know, they what you know, what they call it, the um, the money that they give them, constituency funding and all that kind of stuff, and the allocations, the, the staggering amounts that they receive, and they refuse to make laws for the people. We will surprise. It won't surprise you to know that the. Uh, diaspora voting was already part of the constitutional amendment bill that brought in the um, not too young to vote. It was already there, but it was our legislators that withdrew that from there. This is a terrible situation, and the reason why they did that was because they know the impact that the foreign uh, the, the diaspora will have on the vote. So we have millions of diaspora around the world. Can you imagine the, the voting difference between Jonathan? And uh, Mr. Buhari, and President Buhari was just some two or so million votes. 
So if diasporans had a vote, they could have made a significant difference there. So the fact that they don't see that we need to have that vote, and, to, and it's actually a disenfranchise of Nigerians. Because, yeah, yes. In fact, one of the um, House of Representative persons, and Mr. Uh, Represent, um, Bajamila, he told me that it's possible that Nigerians in the diaspora should put together a case uh, to the Supreme Court, if necessary, asking for the right to vote. Because as Nigerians, we have been disenfranchised. So they should be given the right to vote. And that could be challenging. You know, maybe the Supreme Court could make a, 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 an interpretation to say that, yes, constitutionally, we're being deprived. And, we should be, and all efforts should be made to get, allow us to have the right to vote. We vote um, proxy, but we vote by proxy, as Maggie said, um, sorry, um, uh, Mystique, uh, in the sense that, as she said, you go and call your family and friends and relatives and you advise them. Uh, look, what is the point of you keep crying to me to give you money when you're not even making an effort to dis change your destiny by right vote the right person? Yeah. So please vote the right person because maybe that money is going to dry up. So vote the right person so that I don't have to be wasting my resources. So people need to understand that. So they need to make the right decisions for themselves. So that is happening. That's a proxy vote. But we won't have a say in itself. And finally, even the diaspora itself, um, I believe um, the ease of doing business needs to be completely readdressed to favour diaspora's investment in Nigeria. They're not, I mean, they've set up the Diaspora Commission and a few things like that, but more still needs to be done. Don't. Okay. Uh, before we uh, having this message from our government, because due, to the fact, because due to the fact that we are coming close to the election on Saturday, and um, a lot of our Advertisers do believe that um, this kind of a time, this is the time that we we'll have large viewers. So we've been getting pressure for a lot of commercial. We have to turn some down at the last minute today. So we we'll go back to our commercial department for a commercial break. When we we'll come back, we we'll take it from precisely where we stopped. Commercial department, we are going on a commercial break. My daughter in law, so how are you planning for my son's birthday? Mama, 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 have to cook up for her. Do you people have a grease there? No. It's okay. Okay, let me call you back. Mama, TG, okay. Hi, so wait a minute. Please pack some mogirisi. I am going to visit my son. <laughs> my daughter in law, it's arranged. But you must use original red oil to prepare the soup. What? I'll call you back. <laughs> Mama, TG, please include Isio Moroko, eh, my daughter in law. Everything is now set. But don't forget that gold wristwatch I saw the last time I visited you. Now you can talk until you tire for just 11 cup of a second. Call all networks in Nigeria and 30 international destinations, including US, UK, China, Canada, and India, for just 11 cobra per second. Dial star 211 hash to activate. That's silk bubbles. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Heritage, heritage television. television promoting african culture and heritage at its best from talk shows that concern you to both local and international news that relates to you from grassroots football to african children's programs heritage television we cover your social and special events like weddings birthdays church anniversaries and so on and broadcast them live on our apps and online heritage television broadcasting everything about culture and heritage heritage, heritage television. television we've got, we've it, got covered. it covered do download our apps on both Android, iOS, and Windows mobile platform. Heritage, Heritage Television, Television, your very, your own, very own TV, TV station. station. Okay, welcome back. Before we go on the commercial break, we were actually looking at the issue of um, diaspora voting, which we strongly believe is very important at this moment. But recently, one of the top Nigerian politicians was actually, was actually agreeing about it. He said, look, it wasn't that um, it's easy to be done, but we can't compare Nigeria with other 
some Africa countries, like where some people said, ah, it's been done in Ghana, it's been done some other part of Africa, but Nigeria is most populous, black nation. And the logistic to put that in place, perhaps, I don't know what is going to happen about it. But Mr. Mwari, before we went to Africa, I want you to look at that aspect. The Aspiram vote, you said you believe in it. But can that change the, 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 the vote, or can it add to it? It can add. It has a lot to do with uh, uh, voting in Nigeria. When you have diaspora, especially um, like um, Femi mentioned earlier on, the difference between Buhari winning, I mean, Buhari winning against Jonathan was a margin. So if you had diaspora votes, that would skyrocket. And at this point, we need our votes. We need to be counted. I need to be counted as a Nigerian during an election. And if I'm not allowed to vote from wherever I am, then, then I don't regard I don't myself regard a citizen of Nigeria. Nigeria. I can be resident anywhere I am. I can be resident of the UK or anywhere. I'm a true Nigerian, and I demand my right to vote. vote. And if you, and if you take that from me, you're depriving me of, uh, of my nationality. You know? So of what? We, we need, we need to vote. Um, the Aspen votes need yeah. to count. Whatever they're saying, whether Ghana is smaller or Nigeria is bigger, there is no way we cannot make it work. If you can walk somewhere in France, France is not that small compared to Nigeria, even if it is. If you can walk in all those countries, why wouldn't you walk in Nigeria? Unless there's something we're not telling each other. Okay. Um, so okay. I want you to quickly look at this aspect of um, this coming election on Saturday, we've discussed about vote buying, then the awareness of uh, other people on the street. Do you think that I want you to look at it from the previous elections and the present one? Do you think that things has changed, that people's awareness is high, or do you think we are still precisely where we are? Uh, that's difficult to judge because. Um Right. If you, you see, you've got to distinguish between urban areas and rural areas. So in the urban areas, I think they're more savvy, they're more educated. Uh, there's a lot of the so-called um, internet voters, you know, social media voters, just on the note, talking online and whatnot. So there's a lot of chatter. In fact, I think that social networks and social media will have a big impact. The social media, do you think some of the campaigns of your Facebook, and what's up? Does it play any impact? It has, it it has, it has, an, impact, it has an impact on the urban vote and the educated vote. How many of them have PVCs? How many of them will actually go out to vote is another matter. Uh, but whether that social media gets into the internet, I doubt very much. Those ones rely mostly on the radio, uh, on newspapers, word of mouth, billboards and posters and when people come in the vehicles with their loudspeaker shouting and calling people to come and vote that's where that that what's going to happen there that's the majority of people in Nigeria will be, get their information from so and and to think that to, to, to assume that what we hear on social media will have an impact in the hinterland I think uh, people might be mistaken seriously because a lot of these new parties are non-existent on the ground no one knows of, um, what, I mean, I don't want to mention any of the two parties, but no one knows any of these people. No one has ever seen them. They don't have any ground, uh, ground thing. So if you have the people on the ground, how are you going to be effective? How can you affect change? What is your structure, your political structure? You say you have people in every state. How many people? How many members do you have? You don't have up to a million members. You're ineffective. So, you know, these are the sort of things that people need to look at. So when all these new breed politicians come on board, and I watch them on the TV severally, and they tell you, I'm going to win, I'm certain. It's almost like a joke. They, I'm certain I'm going to win. All of them are going to lose their parties because the, the INEX rules have changed now such that if, you don't, if you're in a presidential election and you don't get 25% in any state, that party is going to be scrapped out. So that's down to them now. So I, I don't foresee any of the other parties beyond PDP and APC getting 25% in any state. I can't see it. Manning, the as I said earlier on, the new political parties, 
the list is endless if we should look at it in a, in a, in a real um, aspect of um, election parties. Compare it to what is happening in the United Kingdom, United States, France, Germany, and some of the advanced countries. Now, some cannot even remember the political parties. Some can remember them with by names. Some, there are some parties who have good candidates, well-educated, technocrats, with intimidating backgrounds. Looking at it, don't you think that the parties are too many? Well, don't you think that some of the parties could have even come together to well, form some kind of alliance or coalition that could be, be effective? Well, they, they actually did. Actually, No, they didn't. They tried to. If I Charlie Boy tried to bring at least 14 of these parties together, 15 actually, precisely, of these presidential candidates of these parties together. But Nigeria being what it is, unity is not in the word Nigeria now, as far as these parties, small parties are concerned. But first off, we also have to think about the intention of these parties. Most of them are not there to win an election. That's right. They're they, pretenders? They're not really pretenders. They know what they're doing. They want to go there, gather votes, and then sell it. That's the word. Sell it to the highest bidder. Mm. That's, that's the way I understand most of these uh, small, small parties. Like now you say that, like you actually said, if you don't get 20%, I'll scram the ball. Then that's whichever percentage I get, that, that is, that, that yeah, is I, the, make, I make sense. Yeah, but then whichever percentage I get, I'll sell it to either PDP or APC for money. Well, that's what I, I do. I, I tend no, Febby, what's your view on that? Well, I tend to agree with the mistake, and, and, and it's panning out in reality. Because why? It's X. We have just our own candidate and we're now supporting either yes. PDP or ABC. That's Why? Right. Because is there something happening? You know what has just happened to the SDP? Both their presidential candidate, both party. I mean, the, do, the two candidates have been banned. The state uh, is suspended from yeah, the Yeah, that's party. good because they're... they're, they're, well, they're and already the party has actually adopted President Mubarak. They've gone to court severally. They're not mm -hmm. a serious entity. And it just shows the... the, the, what, the the immaturity of our politicians. Mm. And I, I, I find it very frustrating to talk about our politics. Someone like Donald Duke has made a fundamental mistake. Exactly. A fundamental mistake, the likes of which he did in the first uh, 20, when, when he first tried to go to presidency, uh, in, uh, was it 20, uh, after 2011, I think it was, mm. when at that time, uh, PDP had zoned the presidency to the north. Well, he with himself decided he was going to run for presidency, thinking he would win. It was not possible. It was not. That was a nonsense then. And what he did with PDP, with SDP now, is also a nonsense. He's just de he's diminished his character, to be quite frank. And with all the shenanigans going on, he's still trying to say, yes, I'm still a candidate. That candidacy is not is non-entity. It, it's not going to it's not going to achieve anything at all. And they've made a mockery of the of the those of the people that actually believed in them. The it's so sad. It's so sad. It's like um, virtually all the parties are one issue or the other. Yes. Now, Miss Bailey, you are a woman. Yes. It's lady, it's lady of substance. I want you to look at the political situation in Nigeria. Mm. Don't you think that the women they are changed? Of course, we are. I wouldn't be surprised to see a person like you, not in the Senate, coming out for presidential election. Well, I'll be the but well, well, president. Well, well, with all your political experience. <laughs> Another failure there. Yeah, okay. well, 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 with me, it's uh, a long story. Long story. Yes. Okay, let us, I want you to quickly look at that area because of uh, yes. the, the, the women. The women, are too. Women, you women in politics, in Nigerian politics, I hail you. I say kudos to you. Amen. Because I went to Nigeria to try and get into politics as a woman, and I couldn't tolerate half of what you women tolerated. In that I was, um, like you said, don't name name, but I was ABC, and I tried, but I didn't. I couldn't succeed. But the women are not given enough chance to showcase themselves. The rights of women are still not the same as we should. We're not saying we should be equal to men. 
but give us the privilege to get at least halfway where we should do what we should do we are not once you're a woman and you get into we say oh you should just listen this man is more this man he, you know he can do better than this woman and all that it still happens but under the under 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 the carpet they wouldn't come out and say so in most states that's why most women cannot come out openly to run for the position they want to really, there, are, there are some argument that people believe some women believe i mean some people believe that yeah. the problem of women are within the women themselves what's your opinion on that well it's the same if it's you will tell me it's not like, that large number you will tell me it's about biden and all that no it's yeah, it's it happens that. with the men too it happens with the men too the problem is not the women. It's like saying that the problem with the Igbos are the Igbos. No, the problems are not with the women. Mm -hmm. It's just with the people on top. Is it their husband? The women. Is it their husband? Not really. Their husband, yes. That's part of it. Like where I come from, the part of the, the Nigeria, I come from the Igbo land, Igbo mm -hmm. state, Abia state. Your husband is still the boss, regardless. So, and then there's this stigma that follows Nigerian women in politics that every single one of them before you get what you get I'm sorry to say this in public but it's always they all they said it to me before you get where you want to get you'll be used that's the word but I'm telling you now it's not facts so men if you're listening to me allow your wives who wants to get involved in prayer in politics let them go in there nobody will tell them Jack they will because when I was going there, some places I go, oh, you want me if you can they can't put you there unless they sleep with you or they do this or do that. That is Jack they're talking. Allow your women to go out there and give us that chance to get where we want to get. And then in, I'm sorry to bring uh, religion into it too. In Islam they used to say women could not handle certain positions. But all that is in the past now. It shouldn't be just women affairs or finance you see women. Give us all that strategic positions and let's showcase ourselves what I I actually you're talking about president maybe next two thousand and twenty seven I won't run for presidency. I'll go for deputy. Uh, Vice president. Vice president. <laughs> and then Nigerian women will follow. <laughs> we deserve it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bradley. Uh, Mr. Kerr, okay, I want you to look at the area, what she discussed. That was your own take on it yeah. regarding that maybe yeah. they've been judged. Yeah. The problem yeah. of the women is within themselves. Uh, I want you to look at it. Well, I support the mistake in that um, the women are valiant and uh, that we have great, strong women in Nigeria at all levels. And we must give them the opportunity to shine just like the youth. And, you know, even when we think about religiously, uh, you know, Queen Amina. On the north. Exactly, yeah. She was a powerful warrior. Mm -hmm. People tried to forget that. And even more recently, you've got the, the lady from Taraba. Mm -hmm. She was vying for governorship. She almost won but was lost out at the at the um yeah. at the at the courts. Court, yeah. She should I believe that was stolen from her. And now she's in another party, not one of the main two. I think she's unlikely to win this time. Mm -hmm. But they are the day we have a, at least a female governor that would be fantastic in the south west we have a series of female deputy governors we've we had we've had a, a man yeah. and we haven't even i think even in the north i think um, el rafai although he's doing a muslim muslim ticket but his vice is a woman so his deputy that he's putting forward is a woman so but we need to see them in the forefront you know um, I don't know about how many of them are council chairmen. I don't know how many of them are speakers of the house.